Hi, I'm uh, Rob Parsons. I'm the chairman and founder of uh, Care for the Family, uh, a charity that has two aims, to help families in trouble, but also positively to strengthen families uh, in the good times. No matter what we believe or don't believe, this is our primary unit of socialization. This is where we get the values that we, we pass on to other, other generations. This is where we learn uh, what's right and wrong. This is what we learn, this is where we learn how the world works. And, and time and time again, I think in society, particularly in our society, we've tried to rubbish the family as though it, it doesn't really uh, work. In 1991, I was invited in by the government of Russia to, to talk to them about building family. They'd had 70 years of atheism, 70 years where they said the family's not important, the state can do everything. But they realized that doesn't work. The family is very important. And now in our own society, I'm seeing a big change in the media as we see how absolutely crucial it is uh, to have strong, uh, strong families. I think one of the toughest issues coming over the horizon um, with increasing force is the, uh, uh, the internet. Now we all know that, uh, that it's a problem now, but you know the, the old advice, put the computer in a room where it, there, it's busy and people can see it and so forth, it still works, but we've been overtaken by events. We have two little grandchildren now and we're thrilled and, and I look at little Harry, he's just about 15 months old. Within five or six years, that kid will be in a playground at school and some of his friends will have mobile phones on which they can download the pornography of the world. From the internet will come many values, many temptations, many difficulties that we didn't even dream of. And I think that is a really, really big issue for, for, modern, uh, for modern parents and one which we must uh, address. I think don't look over your shoulder and wonder what other people are making of your parenting. Uh, if you're a church leader, never say to your kids, you're the pastor's son, if you behave like that, what, what, will they, what will they think of me? In other words, allow each child to develop before God in their own way. You know, one of the things I wrote about in the book is don't try and squeeze them into a jelly mold. You know, sometimes we think there's a jelly mold for the perfect Christian kid non-smoking, church attending, youth club Bible, never missing, a kind of, you know, head of the CU. And, and if we got two kids, one of our kids squashes into that mold pretty well. But we try to get this other kid into the mold and he just won't fit and there's jelly all over the floor. And when we get to heaven, God shows us a room filled with millions of molds. And we say, but there are so many and they're all different. And he says, yes, but do you notice something else? And you say, well, well, yes, the they're all the same. Well, of course. Each is unique, and yet each was built on my son, and each child is unique. You know, sometimes we, we drive kids crazy. Uh, 15, lots of 15-year-old kids don't like sitting still, they don't like listening to lectures, they don't like singing songs, and they don't like reading. So they become Christians, and they come to church, and we ask them to sing songs, to sit still, to listen to lectures, and to read quite a lot. And they stop coming when they're 16, and we call them prodigals. They weren't prodigals, they just couldn't sit still. Now it's not that any of those things would have done them any harm, but there's a bunch of other things that also matter to God that those kids would have loved to have done. Go on a trip to Rwanda, work on the streets with homeless people, get involved in something. These are action kids, and we need to look at each child in a unique way, not make them think they're rubbish because they just don't fit some silly stereotype that matters uh, to us. It's been largely brilliant, <laughs> I say largely, because she's the most honest woman I know. And sometimes in public, she tells too many stories. Um, it's best that people don't know the truth sometimes when you're involved in family, in family ministry. No, I, I love working uh, with Diane. I love working with her because she is so honest. You know, we decided early on, we were not gonna be the kind of couple that came over the horizon with 10 easy answers. And, and I gave the impression that we had the perfect home and the perfect kids. I thank God for what he's done in my kids' lives. I thank God for our marriage. But there have been plenty of tough times. And you know, we've been married almost 40 years. You can't be married that long without going through tough times. Times even when it seemed that love had died, where everything screamed out, let go, it's over. But we have come through those times, and, and I thank God for it. No, I, I love working with Dan. In fact, at the very second, we're on the road together for three weeks, uh, talking together. and. Uh, that's a great blessing.